we are at the Roger Dunn Santa Ana location, and we are in the Titleist booth, but we're going to talk about a little bit about the history of the brand. Where did Roger Dunn come from? We're with Al. Where did the brand come from, and can you tell us a little bit about the history of it? Well, Roger was a golf pro in the L.A., San Fernando Valley market, and uh, I'm not exactly sure where his PGA aspirations ended, but he decided to get into the retail business because he saw the prices at a pro shop and felt like he could do it cheaper in his own, in his own stores. So he started uh, 1965, and he would buy, you know, 100 sets of a closeout, you know, whether it be a Lynx or some brand like that, and could offer it at a better deal than the pro shops did. And he was basically hard goods only at a little driving range in uh, San Fernando Valley. That's crazy to think about when they'll be able to see some of the B-roll that's rolling through here and see the expanse of this store and the, and the sheer size of it. When did you come into play and have the aspirations of this? Uh, I started with Craig McAllister, who's my business partner, uh, back in 1984 and down in San Diego. So what Craig did was he, he knew Roger's son, Steve, who took over the business probably in the early 80s, and Craig wanted to be a franchise in Southern California down in San Diego. So I started in 84. Um, you know, I started just to, as a summer job, uh, so to play softball in San Diego and uh, turned into a full-on career. Uh, it's morphed. I mean, from what we were in 1984 to where we are today it is a thousand degrees difference. Looking around this store, it is unlike any golf store in the country. I call it the probably the only retail destination location that I can think of. If people haven't seen this, heard of this, or been to this location, they need to come if you're a golfer. I'm not sponsored by Worldwide. I want to put that out right away. Um, this is different than anything you will ever see. What made you decide to go with this model, and can you kind of explain this model to people? Yeah, we, we view this as the big kids' candy store, and uh, back in, we moved in here in 2010, uh, August 9th, 2010. We, we remember that because it was 8, 9, 10. But around that time, I think it was like 08 or 09, Golfsmith started opening up, excuse me, Golfsmith started opening up some of these super stores. And I think their store down south of us was about literally half the size of this one, but it was the, what I would call a better mousetrap than what we had. Uh, we had actually had a ping fitting bay in the smaller store that right around the corner in the same parking lot over here that I pointed out earlier. And as we looked at taking this huge space and, oh, my God, how are we going to fill this up and how do we make it, uh, you know, with Disneyland's right up the street, how do we make it the Disneyland for golfers? We started contacting our partners and vendors and saying, hey, you know, we have this tile of space. We think it's pretty cool. What do you think about a Callaway space? And the Callaway was actually the first ones that jumped in and took the front and center focal point. Um, and then TaylorMade followed, well, if Callaway's going to do it, we have to do it. And Titleist was obviously the, the last one to come over on board, although they were on board. And it's just morphed into what we think is the greatest golf store in the country. Um, we're proud of this store. We've, we've done a lot of work on it. It changes every day. It's still well, changing. And, and you should be proud of it. One thing to note, when people come here, the people who are in these store within a store is how I like to kind of call it. They're experts on this equipment. Yeah, a lot of the stores, the these bays are, are actually manned by the vendor employee as well, whether it's uh, our employees certified by them and trained by them or an actual uh, Honma has a guy here a few days a week. Mizuno, even though they don't have a bay, has a guy here a few days a week. Callaway and TaylorMade have guys manning their booths that are certified, trained by them, and um, you know, th there's not a ex better expert anywhere around than those trained guys. Now, one thing to note, and we'll get into this a little bit in episode two, you are not just, you named off a bunch of brands, there are others, but you're not just a big brand place. You guys have just about every brand, and there is a huge amount of hitting bays out there where people can check out clubs and try anything in the world. Correct. We have eight, we call it the driving range, an eight bay driving range that's open to the public. Everything's open to the public. Um, you know, the store's pretty busy, so at on a Saturday morning, late morning, early afternoon, there's wait, people waiting in line. We'll allow people to come into these bays as well, hopefully uh, guided, but if not, they can come and hit balls in these bays as well. Um, it, we want people to come in and hit balls and try all the latest and greatest equipment. And each one, Foresight, GC2, GC Quad, uh, throughout, people can get their data, they can come out here and get fit, obviously, at the different stations. 
there's five to six store within a store stations. How, why not 50? Well, size is one of the problems, obviously, with, you know, it's 63,000 square feet. It's a big store, but, the, the, and the vendors, you know, have to have enough girth, you know, to justify a, a space like this. I mean, Titleist, at one point, this was the, our vend we had a PGA teaching program in here that did okay, but when Tid we wanted to put in the Cameron, Titleist, uh, Vokey was launching, Cameron Putters, obviously a big part, and now with the TS Woods, we need an area for fitting. Um, we actually ask the vendors that we want to be partners with us that, that we can do a decent job and, and are significant in today's world. Have you been in a situation where you're looking around the store, as I'm sure you do frequently, walking through it, and you're, you hear about something else and you, we need it, we need to have it. Why isn't it front and center? How, how do you go about merchandising this? Well, I actually can't take a lot of the credit. The merchandising is done by Sean Vestal, the GM of this store. But, you know, Honma was a perfect example of, I think, is what you're asking, is, you know, we made a, we made a deal with Honma because they become more prevalent in this market with a different product, whether it could have been a Mizuno or a Cleveland. But we thought Honma, with what they built and the market they bring, was a better fit for us or something newer and different. And that's why we approach them. So we're constantly trying to change and improve this place. I mean, one of the biggest improvements is the Nike room. Uh, you know, Nike came to us with a for If you have not been here, the Nike section is massive. And with every piece of apparel you could possibly imagine. Well, with Nike, you know, you look at how, what are they, a $34 billion company. And they came to us and they were showing pictures of House of Hoops, which is a basketball store. And how they have Nike stores inside that. And they came with this concept and they spent hundreds, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars building out that room. And it's another focal point of the store. So we're constantly open to new ideas and ways to make the store better and partner with our partners. And I, and I know the term partnership has been used and overused for years and years and years, but for something like that to work, it has to be a true partnership. And, and so far it's worked pretty well. Mm -hmm.